All right, everybody, I accidentally made a silly mistake and I was recording on mute again. So I'm gonna go back through this lab. This is the lab where we are identifying malicious code. Okay, we are identifying malicious code. So do me a favor, log into the MS1 server. Once you are here, I want you to load this CD. All right, when you load it up, I'm gonna meet you there now. You're gonna see these two files. First thing we wanna do is scan these files for malware. Scan with Windows Defender. This is something you wanna get in the habit of doing, especially when you are getting ready to use some type of external data that you're plugging into your computer. Now, Windows Defender says that it trusts this system or these computers or these files but i'm not sure if i trust windows defenders right now because these definitions were created 1600 days ago the definitions are what the antivirus is using to scan for malicious software so if this isn't hasn't been recently updated i don't know if we can use that Okay, we're gonna close that. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna close this out, open it with you. We're gonna hit the start button. We're gonna open up Windows PowerShell ISC, but we're gonna use it as administrator. Go to more, run as admin. Let's open up. This get dot p no not this one yet. Let's select all files. Okay, and I actually don't want to be on my desktop. I want to be here. We're gonna open up this accounts underscore stage file. This is a PowerShell script, and the first half of this script is seems legit. Is doing some identity and access management operations. But the last part of the script is actually malicious and we are going to see why. Okay. We accidentally clicked the wrong one here. The answer is the malware seems to have been appended to a legitimate script. Okay. Now that we saw that, right feel free to go through this just look at the comments what it's doing right what is it creating read the comments the latter part this end here is going to be difficult to read okay it's going to be difficult to read with your eyes only because of how it is in how it's been uh encoded okay so i'm going to minimize this let's go to lab files sys internals and let's start process monitor make sure you're starting it as administrator okay process monitor is starting Go ahead and start this script under PowerShell ISE. You're gonna select this green button to run the script. Now we're going to hit enter here. And we ran the script, it asks us to hit enter. And we're still trying to assess what the script is doing, right? We're not entirely sure. We do know that we don't trust Windows Defender. So let's run NetStat to see if the script is trying to establish some external connectivity or connections. And if we scroll up, the first thing that 
is alarming to me is port 4444. This is a well-known malicious port. Okay, this is a well-known malicious port, MSF console. It is a pen testing framework tool that uses this as a default port as well. Okay. So yes, we can confirm that this is doing something crazy, right? It's not doing something legit. The process ID number is 3800. The PID is what our system uses to identify this process, okay? And we can even verify this by going to Process Monitor or Process Explorer and looking for this PID, which is right here. Okay. PowerShell did execute that. All right, go ahead and save this file to your desktop. And you're gonna save it as this name here. I've already done it when I was on mute. Get your credit for it and let's go to the next section. Okay, come back to Windows PowerShell ISE. Okay, you can close this out. And what we're going to do now is assess the other script. Okay, so let's open it. We have to select all files here. And let's look at this Python script. How do we know it's Python? Because the extension says .py. If you look at the script, you can't tell what it's, what it's doing because it has been encoded in base64. Now, if we decode it, we could tell what it's doing. In order to decode it, we need to use PowerShell. Let's enter this string here. It's a pretty long string. After you enter this string successfully, it is going to save the decoded version of this script to your desktop. Okay. Pretty sure that closed on me because of the the first script script we ran. So here's the script right here that's been decoded, the Python one. Let's open this with Notepad. Wait, no, not this one. This is my old one. I'm gonna do it again with you all so we can see it at the same time. I'm gonna open this as administrator. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to close this and I'm going to redo this command and save it to my desktop. Okay, now that decoded version is on my desktop. Let's open it up with Notepad++. Saving it like that. Let me do it over. Edit this. Hit yes. Okay, here we go. Now it's been decoded. We can see how that PID was started on port 444 because it's in this Python script. But let's make, let's let's clean this script up a little bit. All right, we wanna clean this. All right, so in order to do that, let's go ahead and highlight 
this space from the comma to subprocesses. Okay, and I want you to hit Control H. All right. And in the replace with box, we're going to use this text here. Okay. And from the search mode, make sure you have extended selected and hit replace all. So this just cleaned up the Python script. Now it's a lot more readable. Okay. Now what is the function of the script? Copy a file to a remote host, establish a bash reverse shell, use SSH to pivot a backdoor shell to a remote host, run an nmap scan and copy the results. This is opening up a reverse shell, right? It's opening up a shell on port 444. Okay, to this system. All right, let's go to the next section. Is there any correlating information that might indicate a single culprit behind both scripts? Let's see. Let's say, is there any culprit information that might indicate a single culprit behind both script? Yep, the same IP address and the same port number were being used. Considering the legitimate purpose of the IAM accounts, what serious security vulnerability does the first part of the code expose? Exposes a user credential. And what urgent response should the, res the presence of this code on the internal systems prompt? Discover the source of the privilege access. So what do we do here, y'all? We identified a malicious code inside of a script. Okay, first we use Windows Defender to try and detect it, it failed. Right, if the antivirus were up to date, it may have detected it. Then we went ahead, all right, since that failed, we did our due diligence to check what processes were started, all right? We saw that there was this port being used after we ran Netstat, right? This port was open on port 444 to this system which does not belong to us. So it was a reverse shell going back to that host right here. And as we mentioned, we also looked at our process explorer to identify the same PID using the same port. All right, so we will see you on the next section, everybody. Thank you.